What's up guys, and Average Recon here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a controller-controlled cursor. Now, I would not be making this video if it was straightforward. This is actually my third, like, attempt. The first two attempts, they, they did not work. They, it, it worked, but not correctly. So I had to completely rethink how to do this. And now it works perfectly. Let's check it out. This is going to be the thumbnail. But anyway, let's uh, see if it works. I have it mapped, I have it working with the WASD keys, but I know for a fact it works with the joystick. So let's press I. This simulates going into the inventory. And as you see, the little circle cursor works. Now, you see a box moving. Let's get this box lined up so it makes more sense. Basically, when the box moves forward, the cursor moves forward, and down, left, right. That's basically how it works, but it's a little more complicated than that. So, the, my first attempt, I basically made it so when the joystick moved forward, the Y, the cursor location Y, incremented, and then when the joystick went down, the Y decremented, and when it went left, the X decremented, and when it went right, the x incremented but with this method you could only for some reason you could only move at one axis at a time so you could only move like this but you could no diagonals at all with this you can so how it works let's check it out it's not a lot of code but it is kind of complicated i hope i'll be able to explain it this is the intro nothing really there um all the code is with the character and the uh, cursor. The only character code that actually matters is this. Excuse me. Uh, this line right here. When I is pressed, switch to page 2. When I is pressed, switch to page 1. Obviously, if you're using a controller, you're going to want to make it something else. But anyway, the main thing is just when this guy's on page 2, he can't move. And then when he's on page 2, he can pressing a button makes him go back to page 1. That simulates the inventory. This is all of the cursor code. So let's go through it. This is this is the box that moves. The box does not have to be... Uh, it, it should be invisible. I just had it visible for demonstration purposes. Okay, so... Forward always equals north. That's pretty important. And then after five frames, for one time, the origin, the starting location of the box, equals its position. Now... When the character I was just showing you is equal to page 2, so when the inventory is open, or whatever you want the cursor for, um, I have this because I don't have a controller, but the code should be exactly this. So when it's page 2, and it is, and you are using a controller, else the global mouse position equals the mouse position. But if you are using, if you are using a controller, delete that, because I, I was using keyboard left stick makes this box move at 0.18 so it makes the box move at 0.18 no matter what direction you put the left stick with strafing is extremely important without it the um, cursor jumps around when changing direction just make sure you add with strafing and also make sure you add object relative um, this makes it so it always forward is always forward I know that probably doesn't make sense but Without this, if your character is facing the wrong way, if your character is facing any direction, the direction your character is facing is also the box is forward. It doesn't make any sense, but just add object relative. So make sure you have this line of code exactly. Now, this all this code is so the box stays bo stays within a certain um, area. Um, so first, how, how the display screen works. The display screen, it's a negative one to one grid. So n negative one, negative one, that coordinate is right here, bottom left of the screen. One one is here, top right of the screen. Every number in between, so like, I don't know, 0 0.5, that would be uh, here. 
0 .50 would be here. Just anywhere in between is inside the screen. So I wanted to make it so that the box could only move one up, neg well, yeah, one up, one down, one left, and one right, and anywhere in between. So that's what this code does. Z, I believe, is up and down. At, I'm sorry, Z is forward and backwards, X is left and right. So, when the position, and, and by the way, origin, I already went over this, it's just the starting position of the box. So when the box position, Z, so up and down, is greater than um, the origin Z plus one. Okay, so, or equal to, that's important. Um, the position, the box is Z, <coughs> is set equal to the origin Z plus one. So this basically means that you can't move past origin Z plus one. The box cannot move past that. And this works for if it's less than origin Z minus one. Uh, origin X plus one, this side, and origin X minus one, this side. All this code does, I think I can get it in one frame. Yeah, there. Oh my god. So pause the video now to copy it if you want. Or if you know how it works. But all this code does is keep the box, keep the little cube, this cube that's moving, within a negative one, negative one to one box, if that makes any sense. Um, basically a two by two box. So now that we've restricted the box's movement, this this code right here sets um, the cursor's vector and displays the cursor. So this is relative. Oh well, it's not actually that simple. So, um, pause the video now to copy it. But how it works: global mouse position. This is the uh, vector that the cursor is going to be displayed at. X. So left and right. This is X is equal to, it's directly equal to the this cube's x, sort of. So it's equal to position x, this cube's x, minus the origin x. So what this means, let's give you an example. So let's say the origin was, the origin's x was 20, and you move the box to the right 0.5. So the position x would be 20.5, the origin's x would be 20. So the global mouse's x would be 20.5 minus 20. Since you move the box over 0.5, it works perfectly because 20.5 minus 20 is 0.5. So the global mouse position's x would be 0.5. Let's say you moved it to the left, 0.3. The posi and let's say the origin's x is 20 again. The position x would be 19.7 and the origin's x would be 20. 19 po and you moved... 0.3 to the left. So 19.7 minus 20 is point th is negative 0.3. And that would be the um, mouse position's x. And it works perfectly. Now the y, the y mouse, posi mouse position y is the exact same, only instead of x, I instead of like x being x, it's z. Because y in a 3D grid is up and down. But Y in a 2D in the display is, well, it's also up and down, but there is no Z in the display. So basically it's the same thing. Mouse position Y equals the position Z minus the origins position Z. It works perfectly. And then all you have to do is display a circle at any scale you want. I prefer point zero, I'm sorry, 0 0.3. You could do like 0 0.2 or 0 0.4, whatever you want on screen at global mouse position that is everything um guys if you didn't understand how it worked rewatch the video or who cares because it works um let's scroll through the code one more time just pause the video anywhere if you want make sure you have it exactly as i do and that's everything that is the working code i'm going to make it work for keyboard one more time I hope you guys um I hope you guys enjoyed the video or I hope you guys understood what I was talking about at the very least at the very least I hope um I hope it works for you <laughs> guys I hope you were able to make a working cursor that's controllable by the Xbox see you later